Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Judith Dissami, Senior Faculty of Dispur College, Department of Accountancy. Today, I would like to discuss some of the important concepts of accounting. Before discussing the topic of accounting, first of all, I would like to mention what is bookkeeping. So, bookkeeping is an art of recording business transaction in a set of book to know the operational result of the organization. Another concept is accounting. So accounting means it is an art of recording, classifying, summarizing all the business transactions in a set of book to know the operational result and financial position of an organization during a particular period of time. To know the operational result as well as the financial position of a concern, some of the accounting terms are generally used, which will be discussed on today's discussion. Number one, the most important point for any business organization is capital. So what is capital as per accounting point of view? Capital means Anything invested by the owner towards the business is known as capital. It may be goods, it may be cash, or it may be assets. Another concept as per accounting point of view for capital is excess of current assets over current liabilities is known as capital. Another important point for accounting is debtors and creditors because there are two parties for any business house, one is debtor, another is creditors. So debtors means anything or goods sold on credit to customers by the business, that customer is known as debtor. And creditors means from home, goods are acquired by the business on credit, that is called creditor. So debtors and creditors are very, very important part for accounting records. Now I would like to discuss some of the accounting principles which are required to record a business transaction. First of all, I would like to mention enter accounts, which is known as classification of accounts, whether small business or big business. Accounts are classified as per two approaches. One is known as English approach or traditional approach. Another is known as American approach or modern approach. As per tradition, traditional classification of accounts, accounts are generally two types. One is personal account, another is impersonal account. Again, personal accounts are three types, natural person, artificial person, and representative person. So personal accounts means personal accounts are those accounts which are relating to any person. That may be natural person, for example, humans, all human beings, say Ramjudu, Madhu, Haru, Madhu, Hori, all are the example of natural person. And another criteria of person is artificial person. Artificial person are those person which are mainly any organization, any institution that may be school, college, hospital, club, corporate house, sole partnership, partnership, and other organization, which is the categorized under artificial person. Another is representative person. Representative person means any amount payable to others or any amount receivable from others, which is known as outstanding salary or outstanding rent, prepaid salaries or prepaid rent like that. It represents the person for payable or receivable a certain sum of money. So that is known as representative person. So as per accounting point of view, there are three types of person. Some of them are natural, some of them are artificial, and some of them are representative. Another Person, another classification is impersonal account. As per traditional approach, classification accounts are two types. Number one, personal. There are three types of person. And again, impersonal means impersonal accounts are those accounts 
which are not personal. So impersonal accounts are two types. One is real, another is nominal. Real means real accounts are those accounts which are relating to assets, things, property, etc. But there are two types of real. Some of them are visible or tangible, and some of them are treated as intangible or not visible, but the value is accounted for. For example, land building, plan, machinery are the example of tangible and visible or which can be tasks. Some of the assets which are very, very important for the business, which are number one fixed or permanent asset, non-current assets, that is goodwill, copyright, trademark, those are the part of real account because they are though intangible, the value of that assets are accounted as per accounting professional as per accounting what is recommendation another is nominal account nominal accounts are those accounts which are relating to expenses or losses and incomes and gains so any accounts relating to expense or losses for example salaries paid or salary account rent account sales account purchase account those are the example of nominal account so as per traditional approach or which is known as English approach, accounts are two types. One is personal, another is impersonal. Personal means relating to any person that will be natural, artificial, representative. Again, another classification is impersonal accounts as per traditional approach. And there are two types of impersonal accounts. Some of them are real and others are nominal. Real means accounts relating to property, asset, things, land building, plan, machinery, furniture, goodwill, patent, copyright, all are incorporated under real account and nominal means any account related to expense or losses, incomes or gains are incorporated under nominal account that is sales, purses, salaries, ramp paid, commission, interest, those are the example of nominal account. And as per traditional accounts, personal accounts means accounts, person, firms, companies, organizations, etc are for personal account. Real accounts, the accounts had according to the, relating to the tangible things which can be seen, tasks, physically at sense or physically visible, such as goods, cash, land, building, machine, etc. are classified as real account. And nominal account, the accounts recording transaction relating to losses, expenses, incomes and gains are classified or are recognized as nominal account. For example, salaries, wages, rent paid, discount allowed, discount received, commission paid, commission received, interest paid, interest received, etc. Those are the example of traditional approach. And another approach is made by American, that is American or modern approach. According to the American approach, accounts are classified under six categories. Number one, asset. Number two, liabilities. Number three, capital. Number four, revenue, expense, and withdrawal account. And withdrawal account. So, asset means assets accounts are the account of asset and properties such as land, building, plan, machinery, goodwill, patent, copyright, trademark, cash in and cash at bank, inventory, investment, etc. These categories also include accounts of debt or debtors means to a home which are sold on credit or amount receivable from others is known as debtors. So it is a part of asset. Another account is liabilities. Liabilities accounts are the account pertaining to the liabilities of the entity to lenders, creditors for goods, creditors for assets, creditors for expenses, liability bank loan, etc. Next, capital. Capital is the amount with which the business is started. It is the account of the owner who invests money in the business as a capital. So capital means anything invested by the owner towards the business is known as capital. It is a part of modern approach under classification of accounts. Another is revenue. Revenue accounts are the account of incomes and gains, for example, sales, discount received, interest received, commission received, those are the example of 
revenue. Means recurring nature of income is known as revenue. Now, expenses account means recurring nature of expenses. So expenses accounts are the account of expenses incurred and losses suffered by entity which is known as regular nature of expenses which is known as revenue expense. For example, purchase of goods, wages paid to labor, depreciation, rent paid, rent and taxes, like revenue account, expenses accounts are also taken into account for preparation of training and profit and so So when we prepare training and PL account to find out gross profit as well as net profit, we have considered the revenue account and revenue expense. Revenue income will be shown on our case side. Some of them are direct and some of them are indirect. Direct are shown on the case side to find out the gross profit and indirect are to be shown on the case side to find out the net profit. And expense also, direct expense are shown on the debit side of training account and indirect expense are to be shown on the debit side of PL account. And all revenue nature of income and expense are to be shown on the training and PL account to find out gross profit and gross loss. And last, as per modern reports, last classification of accounts is withdrawal account or drawing account. Withdrawal account or the account, that amount is withdrawn by the owner, that may be case, goods, etc. That is called drawing. So as per modern reports, entered business accounts are classified under six categories. Some of them are known as assets, liabilities, capital, revenue, expense account and withdrawal account. Next, what is the rules for debit and credit? In normal practice, debit means debit the receiver of the goods and credit the giver of the goods. But as per normal principle, debit is an art of recording left hand side and credit is the art of writing left hand side. So as per English approach, which is known as golden rule, rules for debit and credit. As per English approach for a personal account, what will be the debit and what will be the credit? So as per English approach, rules for debit and credit for personal account is debit the receiver of the benefit and credit the giver of the benefit. So who receive the benefit of the particular service, that person and that item will be debited and give her the benefit is known as credit. So any benefit given that will be created, any benefit received that will be debited as per personal account under traditional approach. And as per real account, debit what comes in our business and credit what goes out from the business. So when we have to follow a particular item is real account, what will be the debit and what will be the credit of fundamental rule or golden rules or dividend credit is debit what comes in credit what goes out and in case of nominal account nominal means all losses and expenses and incomes and gains are incorporated under nominal account so as per nominal account debit losses and expenses and credit incomes and gains those are the rules for debit and credit as per traditional approach and as per American or modern approach for debit and credit, for asset account, debit is when there is an increase in the asset, it is debited. And account under American approach for credit, when there is a decrease in the asset, it is created. So basic principle of asset is, if the value of asset is increased in our business, then it will be debited. If the value of asset is decreased, then it will be created. So increase of the asset is debit and decrease of the asset is created as per modern approach. For liabilities account as per modern approach, when there is an increase in the liability, it will be credited. When there is a decrease in the liability, it is debited. And number three is capital. When there is an increase in the capital of the business, it is credited. When there is a decrease in the capital of the business of the owner, it is debited. Another is revenue. When there is an increase in the revenue of the business, it is credited to business account. When there is a decrease in the revenue, it will be debited 
in the account of the business. For expenses, as per modern approach, when there is an increase in the expense or losses, it will be debited. When there is a decrease in the expense or losses, it is credited. For withdrawal account, last account for modern approach, when there is an increase in the withdrawal, it is debited. When there is a decrease in the withdrawal, it is credited. Again, classes of accounts when to be debited and when to be credited as per modern approach. If the theoretical aspect is not clear, then we have to use this chart to debit or credit a particular item. For asset account, what will be debited? If the asset is increased, then it will be debited. If the asset is decreased, then it will be created. For liabilities account, if liabilities decrease, then it will be debited. If liabilities increase, then it will be created. For capital account, if capital is decreased in our business, then it will be debited. If the capital of the owner is increased towards the business, then it will be credited. For revenue account or income account, if income is decreased, then it will be debited. If income is increased in our business, then it will be credited. For expenses account, if the expenses is increased or losses is increased, then it will be debited. If expenses is decreased in our business, then it will be credited. And for withdrawal account, if withdrawal is increased, then it will be debited. If withdrawal from business is decreased, then it will be credited. So today I conclude my lecture with this basic concept of accounting and bookkeeping along with classification of accounts as per traditional approach and modern approach as well as what are the fundamental rules for debit and credit as per traditional approach and modern approach. Next day I will discuss again the remaining chapter of accounting, basic concept of accounting that is what is journal, what is books of accounts, what is journal, what is ledger, how can you journalize the transaction, how can you posting the accounts in various ledger accounts that will be discussed in my next slide. Thank you all of you.